Hi friends and happy holidays. One of the super fun trends going around CosTube right now is Home for the Holidays and I decided to participate in that so I will be linking the playlist below. Between Cottagecore and The Queen's Gambit, pinafores are very in right now, which is perfect for me because I have a copious amount of ugly Christmas sweaters, but all of my nicer holiday things don't fit me this year. I am currently five months pregnant, and while I am really excited about that, my things just don't fit. So I needed a new nicer holiday outfit, and this trend came at just the perfect time. I found a few inspiration images of pinafores that were much looser and flowier that I figured would go over my belly well, while also still looking really cute and giving me a little room to grow, but that are my style and that I would enjoy wearing. So I will be making one of those. I've decided to try making my own pattern for this using my dress form, which is something I am very not comfortable with. Usually if I draft something, I draft it flat. And usually when I'm drafting, I'm drafting for work. I am an ecclesiastical seamstress. So typically if I'm sewing for work, it is these large boxy baggy men's garments. So something a bit more fitted and made for a curvy body is not typically what I'm used to. And I've decided to push myself a little and use a plaid so I can test out how well I do pattern matching, which is something I do do occasionally, but typically it's on garments that have all straight seams. The point is I need a new holiday outfit it needs to fit my baby belly. I want to use materials that I already have and I want to practice my pattern drafting and my pattern matching. So there's a lot of expectations on this project. I didn't record it, but this is what I got from draping on my dress form. Here is the first attempt at the pattern. I had to make quite a few changes to this one. Um, I just took the paper and taped it together and put it on my body. From the first paper pattern I made, I had to make quite a few changes. I had to add an inch to the front, curve the front so that it would overlap on my bust. I had to pinch quite a bit from the back, which was a little surprising to me. Um, and then so I needed to adjust for the curve that created in the back and I also needed to curve the sleeve some more. You can see just how much I had to pinch out of the back from the original paper pattern that I had drafted. Materials, here we go. This is a skirt that I made last year that due to baby belly definitely is not going to fit me this year. And I made it out of a curtain, so I will be using this and the other curtain that matches. So we also have one more curtain that matches that I can use and this guy. Oh, I need two hands. Okay, bye. I wasn't originally going to line this, but I decided to because I am really bad at making patterns from a dress form as I have found out and I figure I can use the lining as a type of mock-up to make sure that the pattern is going in the direction that I want it to and that everything fits the way that I want it to. The fit isn't too bad, but it's really not what I had wanted because the stripes in the front, since I curved the front, are not laying the way that I want them to. So I will have to brainstorm and see what I can do about that. I could not for the life of me think of how I was going to repattern this to make it make the pattern fit straight over my bust. So I went to ask some fellow CosTube people for support and ideas. And the very lovely Marion of Green Martha and Katie of Latina Living History 
gave me the suggestion to do a side bust dart, which I totally forgot existed. I haven't patterned one of those ever, but I had an idea in mind of how to make it happen. So this is my attempt at that here. In the previous clip, you had seen that I had patterned this with a straight front, and here you can sneak a peek that I ended up adding a strip to make it curved because my brain, super undercaffeinated, said, hey, hey, you forgot the bust curve. So I added it back in, even though I had just done all of that work to take it out. Anyway, this is very wrong, which you'll see very shortly. Surprise, surprise, when you add a curve to the front of the pattern piece, your straight lines will end up curved. I finally figured it out. I finally realized I had completely messed myself up and made the new mock-up piece. We are now on mock-up number three of a garment I had not intended to mock up at all because I thought it was going to be easy. So that's why I should never think that <laughs> about a garment. You can see I finally figured it out. They are at least mostly straight and I'm okay with that. I went ahead and just tried a few different pleating patterns with the pattern of the fabric going both directions just to see what I would like and that's how I chose which direction to lay out the bodice and skirt fabric in. I couldn't make a decision so my sweet friend Noelle helped me make a decision and she said that green looks really good with my complexion so I pleated it so that you could see more green. Now I'm trying to figure out how to match the pattern so that it looks right when I line the bodice up. Okay, I think I've got it figured out. This is the center point of where I want them to overlap. So this is what actually is the center point of each bodice, which is the green and the middle of the green and red strip. And then plus a half inch for overlap on each side, which will be an inch total, and then plus a half inch for seam allowances. If I'm wrong, you can laugh at me later. I'm like 99% sure I've got this where I want it, so I'm going to cut it out now. I had marked here where each of the plaid pieces went, and so I'm going to transfer those to this side, flip it over, line them up, and cut it out again, and in theory, the pattern should all match. Here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna pin down a half inch and see if it worked. I'm not the most hopeful. So there's good news and bad news and good news. The first good news is I know what I did wrong. The bad news is that I don't have enough fabric to cut out a second piece because I'm not sure that my skirt fabric, once it's pleated down, will be enough. So I want to save the remnants to make sure I have enough to do that. The other good news is that I don't hate how this looks. You can see I should have given enough room for one more stripe and I did not. But when you put it all together, I think that's actually kind of cute and it doesn't bother me. So I'm just gonna go with it. Well, that was almost disastrous. So note to self, next project to actually lay out the pattern pieces before you cut them. A little update, I transferred the marks for the darts from the pattern and sewed everything from the bodice together. So now I am going to take the lining and bag this out and then I'll check back in.
In a move that should surprise no one with how this project is going, my brain went on autopilot and I sewed out a bag lining the wrong way. I was thinking about putting buttons in these red boxes here, but I'm getting a bit of gaping if I pin it that way, so I'm going to fuss with that and try some other things and see what I come up with. This is a little better, but I am still getting some gaping, so I might put a hook and eye here. Now that I have fixed my 10 millionth mistake on this thing, I'm just going to iron in some interfacing for the buttons and buttonholes. Let's play a game called Find Five Matching Buttons That You Don't Hate. <laughs> it's not a very fun game. Now I'm just unpicking the skirt and the curtains so that I can make the most use of the fabric that I have. I kind of had a revelation last night that maybe I could overlap these two lines here and it looks fine. I think it's still centered. So I'm wondering if when I patterned, that's what I had intended all along. And I never actually made a mistake. I just convinced myself I did because I was tired. I really don't know. It's too late to find out, but I think this is what I'm going to move forward with. One of my very handy dandy sewing machines has a very handy dandy buttonhole foot. So that's what I went ahead and used. I had to decide if I wanted to understitch or top stitch all of this. And I decided top stitch for two reasons. One, I really like this colored thread. It's one of my favorite colors. So, you know, why not feature it more? And then two, because I think the top stitching gives it kind of this rustic look. And that's kind of the cottage core aesthetic I'm going for that I think this fabric lends itself well to. I also opened up the buttonholes so all that's left is to top stitch the neck and sew this to the skirt and press the skirt. I found myself in a bit of a time crunch so I definitely didn't record as much of this as I should but I connected the bodice and the skirt and to be quite honest with you, all I did was serge it. I didn't even bother changing my thread color. So, but nobody will ever know but me and anyone who watches this video. Ta-da! Bye, friends.